Today, Trevor Grant from the Leprosy Mission puts right some of the myths surrounding leprosy. So I would just really like to say such a really big thank you because of all the work that God does through the Leprosy Mission, it is just being a partner with him and, and people of Sandy and of St. Swithin's congregation in particular, thank you so much for your support because you are changing lives, you are making a difference. So thank you so very much. Just to remind people very quickly about the bacterial disease that's transmitted on our breath and takes up to 20 years sometimes to develop in any kind of symptoms. Um, and a lot of people don't understand what they've got and there's huge stigma about it and therefore they will hide it very often um, until the, the symptoms become serious nerve damage whereby they cannot ignore it any longer. People become aware of it and they have to do something. Um, and that's when perhaps most people actually come to hospital in desperation rather than in the early stages when we could have treated it without any repercussions whatsoever. So leprosy is a bacterial disease. It, yes. It's not, um, not the same as COVID. Because no. COVID-19 is a viral disease, which is a much smaller organism. And a bacteria is a little bit bigger. So bacteria are slightly easier to treat, are they? There is leprosy. How do you treat leprosy? Is it treatable? Yes. So since 1982, we use three antibiotic drugs that work together and virtually instantly stop you being infectious. Um, but they, they gradually kill off the bacteria within your body to prevent any more advancement of the, the, the disease. But where you've had nerve damage that perhaps has clawed a hand or you know given you a foot drop it, 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 can't, it, it can't really reverse nerve damage um, but there are you know the, there are the reconstructive surgeries that we do where in hands and feet and actually in eyelids too we, we replace those tendons that have been effectively stopped working um, because of the brain messages. Brain messages go through the nerves and when the brain messages stop getting through to muscles, muscles stop working and that's what causes hands to claw over months um, and feet to stop being able to lift and stop you being able to walk and stop you being able to close your eyes. And clearly closing your eyes protects your eyes. <laughs> So, so you get damage to your outer limbs and to, to your eyes um, because uh, as a secondary sort of thing? Yes, yes. Leprosy in its simplest form, um, it just stops the nerves working. So if the nerves stop working, the obvious thing is that you can't feel anything. You lose that sense of touch. So physical damage can happen by way of burns, typically because people in developing countries often cook over open fires, or just picking up a mug, you know, a hot mug will burn you and you wouldn't know it. Um, so it's that not having the feeling causes a lot of damage. Um, and it's things like cuts and sores and pressure sores often cause ulcers, particularly on the soles of the feet. And, and it's because of that um, that people get infections simply because they don't know they've cut themselves. They, it's not hurting. The cut just gets worse. It gets infected. And, and in its worst case, and this is what you do see a lot with, with leprosy, is that the infection then gets right into the bones. Right. Just as an A infection, it's not leprosy as such, it is an infection into the bone over months will mean that the bones will they will dry and crumble and the body just absorbs that and fingers shrink and toes shrink and very often also the bridge of the nose can collapse. So these are secondary issues um, as a result of the nerve damage that solely leprosy causes. Okay, so um, it, leprosy is bacterially caused you can fight that with antibiotics. Um, 
it causes uh, sort of secondary damage because of the way it affects the nerves. Yes. Um, this COVID-19 is a, a viral thing. So it's more difficult to treat and to figure out what it's doing. But it's transmitted on droplets, uh, which is why we're all wearing face masks. Um, it, the leprosy bacteria are also carried on those droplets, but because they're larger, they presumably don't travel quite so far. But they're not quite as infectious, are they, as the virus? No. No, leprosy is actually not very infectious at all. Um, it is a substream of tuberculosis, TB, um, but again, it's just nowhere near as, as infectious. And, and actually, that is one of the biggest problems because, you know, you could catch it and it's, it, the, the, um, uh, the cells in our bodies, um, the leprosy cell will multiply and duplicate itself only once every two weeks. Right. So these tiny little cells, it takes ever such a long time to develop. And it's be wow. because of that, you know, the whole idea of like track and trace with leprosy is almost impossible because it would, could have been years and years ago that you actually, you know, caught it. Um, so I get, I get a few bacteria in my body now, and I won't know mm. about it until it has grown every couple of weeks, more and more and more, until maybe 10 years later, I get yes. some sort of outer skin showing discoloration on my skin. Yes, I, um, yes. The and typically that, it, it's, it's the, the discolored patch. Um, often this is on dark skinned people, and therefore it goes very pale. Um, and you lose sense of touch within that patch, which could be anywhere on your body. And I'm uh, passing that on to other people, but not very easily. I, I really need to be up close for a long yes. time with somebody to catch it. Yes, you need to be in a prolonged, close relationship. So in most cases, it's going to be transmitted within families where, you know, three generations of one family will be in a one room homemade sort of mud hut type building typically um, and therefore they are breathing over each other a lot um, so we always will encourage a whole family once we diagnose one person we will encourage the whole family to come and be tested because typically you will find more of the family than do have it so uh, me touching a, a person with leprosy, uh, holding their hand, being close to them, is not really going to be uh, an effective way of passing it on to me. If they've already been on the antibiotics, the, they're not infectious now after a couple of months. Um, and so even though they've still got the bacteria, I'm not going to pick that up by nursing them. Uh, it's not going to undo the damage of their limbs. Um, and so the leprosy mission is trying to do what? What are you trying to do? Right. Perhaps our first objective, therefore, is to make people aware. Um, and, and it helps in places like India, where the government is very much working with us. They are very, very supportive. Um, and there's you know, multimedia forms going out to advise people that, that leprosy is just a disease to be cured like any other kind of disease and, and not have this kind of feeling of a curse, which is what many, many people believe around the world in different countries. So we want people to be aware that it is a disease just like any other that can be cured. So we want people to come early as soon as they, they recognize those initial symptoms which could be a stiffening of limbs or the patches because of the nerve damage. And if we can treat it with these antibiotics, they will have no after, after marks whatsoever. Right. Um, so that's perhaps the first objective, to make people aware, to come for healing. And then once they've had that initial healing with the antibiotics, then we can assess really the, the nerve damage and how much other impact it's had on the physical body. 
as to whether or not reconstructive surgery is necessary to get clawed hands to be useful again, which we do, and feet so that they can be lifted so they can walk again, and eyelids to get them working again. And, and, and in the worst cases, you know, we have this case where, as I was saying about the infection that gets into people's bones, um, can cause amputations. Uh, and that's then when our most, you know, our uh, prosthetics and artificial limbs come into effect. Um, and in many countries, this is not an option in the normal type of medical systems. You know, most people have to pay for their health and they can't afford it. If you are that poor, um, as many people are, that will have leprosy. Because our immune system um, kind of does determine whether or not we catch it or not. For you or I um, to go into a leprosy community, to shake people's hand, to give them a hug, to share a, a cup perhaps in their house, you know, our own immune system would fight those germs off and we would very unlikely <laughs> to catch it, apart from anything else, we wouldn't be there long enough. Um, so, but, uh, yeah, so yeah. physical things afterwards, and then you're looking at education, vocational mm -hmm. training for giving them a new career or business they can start themselves, so they can become self-sufficient and get control of their own lives again. My immune system, even if I was with somebody who had live bacteria, which is not likely in a leprosy hospital because they'll have been on the drugs, yes. uh, my immune system will deal with the bacteria pretty well because actually our bodies are quite good at dealing with bacteria because they're nice and big and the white cells can kill them off. Yes. Viruses like the COVID virus being so much smaller is so much more difficult to deal with. But yes. leprosy, once upon a time, uh, it was here in uh, in England. Didn't I, wasn't I in a priory in Norfolk, uh, an abbey where they had a leprosorium? Is that the right it's, word? It is the right word. Uh, there's a little village up there somewhere on the coast. Yes, and in fact, it was all across the country and in Europe. Um, there's a little uh, chapel in Gloucester. Uh, that still exists that was the chapel next to the Leprosorium Hospital um, and just the chapel is still in existence um, but it was across the country and in, across Europe and it's only because our own health standards have increased over okay. the last few hundreds of years that we've managed to push it back oh. and, and that's why it is left as a disease of poverty now in, in areas where there are you know, mass populations living uh, in very, very poor conditions. So with all the different um, calls upon our uh, finances and mercy and, and heart, you know, our, our concern for other people, leprosy is a good thing to be connected with, I suppose, because it is connected to the poor. It is a, a disease of poverty. Yeah. And it's, ignorance. Yes, of both of those. It most definitely is a disease of poverty. 